In 1897, Orison Sweat Martin created Success Magazine, a very popular magazine still in print to this day. It had grown to a circulation of about half a million subscribers, and its publication had its own building and printing plant in New York, which was backed by a force of over 200 employees. Now, as part of his magazine articles, he had interviewed many people, including Andrew Carnegie. He also wrote this book here called An Iron Will, in which I want to discuss it today. And he's got an interesting perspective, which is very much aligned with what we've been having our conversations about. He says, Make divine will my own will in all action. Doing this, a man's iron will, instead of being a malignant, selfish power, will be useful in uplifting mankind. So another way of saying this is, Surrendering over to divine will. Now, what does that mean? So he says, The athlete trains for his race, and the mind must be put into training if one will win life's race. So training really is aligning to what we truly want to express as our, we can say, creative expression, entrepreneurial endeavor, success, or whatever we define it, aspects of the journey in which a person would say, if only I could get myself to do the things that I know I have to do, then what will happen is I will be able to live in flow. So when we're looking at putting the mind into a training, I would say it's more of two parts. Number one, discovering what it is within yourself that you truly desire to cultivate and express. Could be a certain business, could be a fitness goal. Something that you can actually allow yourself to experience, number two, which is what I refer to as purification of the mind. See, I believe, and what is being suggested here when he says, make divine will my own will in all action, is that we inherently have within us the attributes needed to experience the success that we desire. What we want to do is encourage this and allow ourselves to release from certain thinking patterns that denies, and we're really the ones within ourselves via our own thinking patterns, denying ourselves from experiencing the divine will in relation to our goals. And so he says, by continued efforts repeated again and again, day after day, week after week, and month after month, the process of obtaining this self-mastery, this complete command of one's mental powers, is a gradual one, its length varying with the mental constitution of each person. Now it starts with commitment. And we can actually relate this over to the process or the attributes of flow that were discussed in the book Flow by Mihai Csikszentmihalyi. I'm going to relate this over because I found for my own journey and others that I've worked with, they were able to connect with their divine will, align it with, we could say, their human will, as a result of doing the things that would bring them into flow. While getting into flow, maintaining flow, and making flow a priority a person's thinking patterns begin to change. They become more of who they really are. And they allow themselves to be expressed and from an observer, a third party, looking at them, going about their day-to-day -day experiences. They say, wow, this person has a lot of willpower. They have a high degree of willpower. 
What they may not know is that this person has truly identified within themselves what they truly want to do, their goals, their visions. And we say, you know, find it within yourself. What is it that you truly want to do? And allow themselves to do it working with a process like flow, which we'll talk about in a moment. And through the process, they release themselves from inaccurate thinking patterns, belief systems, ideologies, which created unnecessary, or we could say the identification of those thought processes and patterns created unnecessary complexity in their mind, which expressed itself as a person seeing themselves as not having the willpower, such as procrastination, trying to get themselves to do something. Thus, it's important to keep into consideration what he says here, where he says, perhaps the most valuable result of all education, it was said by Professor Huxley, it is the ability to get yourself to do the thing you have to do when it ought to be done. Now, this is actually one of the simplest pieces of advice that I've ever received in my life. I remember actually listening to an audio program in 2005. It was called 21 Secrets of Self-Made Millionaires by Brian Tracy. And he said something like this, exactly like this in that program. And I said, this makes a lot of sense because all of us know what it is that we truly want to do and what is in contribution to realizing our vision, the activities, the skills, and so forth. The question is, do we allow ourselves to do those things? Now, one can say, well, if I could allow myself to do those things, then I would do those things. What are the challenges? Why is it that we have challenges? Well, there's thinking patterns. Perhaps we doubt ourselves. We might not feel we're good enough. We might not be able to accomplish it. We might not have seen ourselves actually commit to something and see it all the way to completion before. And we seem to form conclusions about ourselves in relation to those experiences in the past. However, when we're talking about flow and deep stages of flow, which is autotelic, we are really living divine will. So everywhere you go, you have the opportunity to, you could say, begin again from being how you truly are. So we practice this with whatever activity, whatever task, whatever project, whatever commitment we have. We make flow a priority. So let's look at the flow elements. A clear goal from abstract to granular, as in, here's the goal I have. I want to achieve this specific level of success, whatever it may be. Certain financial goal, certain relationship goal, certain health and fitness goal, whatever it may be. And we also know the parts that make up the whole. For example, an entrepreneur knows what project they need to complete or series of projects. Or they might not know all the steps to get to the destination, but they at least know the first series of tasks or projects or the first project. And they have an opportunity in that moment to get into the flow, maintain the flow, so they can purify their mind and bring forth the divine will, aligning the human will with the divine will, and as a result of it, experiencing what he refers to as the iron will. Number two, immediate reporting and feedback. So a person really can look at it from a qualitative perspective or a quantitative perspective. Qualitative is how do I feel? When we're deeply submerged, and it's far easier to be deeply submerged in what we truly want to do, and that's why I suggest doing this with what you truly want to do, because that's also aligned with the divine will. That's exactly where you want to be. That's what you want to do. So feeling is the secret. How do you feel? We want to maintain a lighthearted feeling of flow and connectivity with the project, with the task, 
whatever it is that we're doing. We can also look at quantitative measures such as key performance indicators. When you're at the gym, the amount of sets you do, the reps you do, the pace that you're running on the treadmill, the series of activities leading up to the completion of the project. If you have a project, you can break it down into a series of tasks, put it onto a task list and committing yourself to one task at a time till you are complete the project. A healthy ratio of where challenge meets skill. Perhaps if something is too overwhelming, we can break it down into small parts, small steps, small projects, and aim to complete those activities. Because remember, what we're doing here is we're aligning ourselves back to this inherent ability so that we can actually see that this is how we experience it, flow. And then upon reflection, as we complete the tasks, the projects, and so forth, we look back and we say, wait a second, I actually do have this iron will. It was always inherent within me. And now, upon reflection, looking back at my past that I've created from the now, I can then see myself doing this again and again with other tasks, with other projects, and so forth. So a harmonious ratio where challenge meets skill. Many ways of looking at it. I recommend watching my flow series. I'll put a link in the description to that. Now, as a person continues to do this, they actually bring forth this divine will. They're actually encouraging the iron will. They're actually doing the very thing that he suggests, which is the ability is brought forth. We have the ability within us to get ourselves to do the thing that we know we got to do. And we're able to do it. Now, this is something that I've been practicing over the years. And as I continue to do this, and I value this entire process that I'm sharing with you right here, everything in this video, and that's why I felt such a deep resonance with this book. I noticed that I don't have the challenge of procrastination. It's rather I commit to something and I'm going to see it all the way to completion. Now, through the repetition of doing this again and again and again and again, what you'll notice is this has become automatic. That's why I would like to encourage this because we can see the enormous benefit of working with this information in our entrepreneurial endeavors, in our creative expression, when it comes to learning, when it comes to living life based on how we truly want to live, which again is alignment with the divine will, the iron will. Now, as a person experiences this in the task, in the project, and they'll be able to notice this more so, they'll start to experience action and awareness becoming one, distractions tapering away, and are eventually excluded out of consciousness. We could say they're deeply focused, deeply present, lightheartedly so, as they're working on their tasks, their projects, their initiatives, and so forth. Distractions taper away. So one of the questions that I get asked is, how do you stay clear from distraction? How do you stop yourself from being distraction? Well, this holds the key. By looking at the tasks, the projects, the various things that you do each day as an opportunity to enter into and maintain your flow, you don't have to think about distractions because they won't show up. When you're in the zone, when you're in the flow, distractions don't exist. Now, as mentioned, this is a practice, something that as we practice this more so, it becomes our self-image. You are then the person that is highly focused or the individual with the iron will. Also, fear of failure tapers away, self-consciousness disappears, a sense of time is altered. They enjoy the experience, and because this experience is, you could say, even at a neurotransmitter level, and watch the video I did on anandamide, exactly the kind of emotions and behaviors and experiences that they want to have, they actually become that way and look forward to being in more opportunities like this. 
All of a sudden now they become someone who's highly focused, may be considered as to some as a hard worker, but at the end of the day, they're a person that commits. They commit to things and they're able to see their tasks, their projects, and their initiatives all the way through into the realization, into success. And the deep aspect, or we could say where a person aligns with the divine will or becomes one with the divine will, is autotelic. The activity become autotelic. We do it for the sake of itself. We do it because a lot of times we might not even know why we do it, but we do the activity. We automatically show up. We don't overthink. We find ourselves automatically doing the things. So as he says, perhaps the most valuable result of all education, it was said by Professor Huxley, it is the ability to get yourself to do the thing you have to do when it ought to be done. If you're doing it automatically, then in a way you're not getting yourself. You're not trying to do it. You're doing it. There is no try in the equation. There is doing it. Conscious power. He says conscious power exists within the mind of everyone. So we all have the ability to do what is being suggested. I personally come from a background where I was considered to be always distracted. And I was given all kinds of labels which weren't true. I was simply demonstrating certain behaviors that were interpreted for me to be a certain way. But the reality was that when I found the things, and this is why we want to go within ourselves and ask ourselves, what is it that we truly want in life? How do we truly want to live and commit to doing those things? Make those the priority. Once you find these things, what is being discussed here, you can work with the process of flow, this information, will be allowed to automatically express. And that right there is the conscious power. And because we know that the conscious thought processes and what is related in regards to doing things consciously is impressed upon the subconscious mind, the subconscious mind actually allows the expression of all in harmony and in contribution to actually help create your success in reality. This is where we get maybe more into things that we don't know. People seem to show up. Opportunities seem to show up. We see connections, resources that were always there, all of a sudden available to us in harmony and in contribution. This is why we see when a person has direction, when they're moving in a direction and they're in autotelic, people, resources, and information seems to be attracted to them. We could say they have momentum, and the momentum attracts those that are in that momentum and the resources and the opportunities and so forth. All of it is sourced in mind from the conscious power, which we all have. And so he says, it is by an absolute knowledge of yourself, the proper estimate of your own value. So what is the proper estimate of our own value? You decide within. As mentioned, I was put in many categories and labels, which I could have identified with and that for a period of time I did identify with. But however, I realized that I create my own labels in my own mind. So do you, and you can identify with whatever you'd like. Because as we identify with those labels, such as I really can have what I want, I allow myself to express what is accurate and true to who I am, and that's my value, then you'll find yourself actually integrating these aspects that are being discussed. So the proper estimate of your own value, you determine it. You determine it, you reveal it within yourself. That's another connection to the divine will. He says to develop it is to individualize all that is best within you and give it to the world. It is there to be developed and brought forth like the culture of of that obstinate but beautiful flower, the orchid. To allow it to remain dormant is to place oneself in obscurity, to trample on one's own ambition, to smother one's own faculty. See, we're doing this all within ourselves. We might have been doing it unconsciously, 
but we have the opportunity to practice this. So I brought up an example of how I apply flow in relation to a task or a project using the flow process, but there's different ways that one can develop it, such as getting ourselves to do something that we know is beneficial because we receive the rewards, the benefits, you could say the neurotransmitter releases as well after the experience. They may seem very simple, but little activities like this that I found allows us to reveal inherently within us what we truly desire and honor it, making it a habit. It's a practice, repetition, repetition, like you would developing your body as an athlete. The same thing is applied with mind. So things like contrast showers, I found to be very helpful. Also, a person can do cold plunges. I just prefer contrast showers because I like the hot and cold, hot and cold. It's also an opportunity to say, I commit to doing something every day. And by doing it, I not only am seeing myself as the person that does what I commit to, but this will become a habit in all areas of my life. And through that thinking process, you'll see yourself as the person who commits and then sees everything that they commit to into success, into realization. And that's a very powerful self-image. That's what we want. For example, for an artist, a musician, or a singer, it could mean committing every day one hour to practicing the musical instrument or to sing or something like that. And doing it from a place of flow. Meditation as well. As we have been discovering and we've been discussing and we shall further discuss, meditation helps us recalibrate over to a more of a flow-based day because it allows us to get more into an alpha state of mind. And in alpha frequency, these kinds of behaviors, what's being discussed here, the divine will, is automatic. So I would encourage perhaps a 20-minute meditation as part of a morning routine. That's what I do every day. The benefits of meditation occur over the course and they compound over a lifetime. I've been meditating pretty consistently at least five days a week and a lot of times it's seven days a week since 2008. And I'm noticing more so every day the benefits of meditation in relation to committing to something and actually automatically doing the thing, being more autotelic. As well as I'm finding more of this understanding of the divine will alignment with human will. One of the byproducts or benefits of meditation is a greater degree of concentration. Now, this is enormously beneficial for artists, entrepreneurs, anyone. I believe that we can all benefit from being more present and concentrating. And I'm not speaking from a place of force. I'm talking about lighthearted conviction on whatever it is that we're doing, whether it be a conversation we're having with somebody or a skill that we're looking to develop or even doing something like gardening or doing the dishes being more present. So he says, to prosper, you must improve your brain power and nothing helps the brain more than a healthy body. So he speaks of relatability, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. So we want to see all these things as connected and related. I actually right now at the age of 42 have way more energy, have a greater degree of output, I work out in the morning, I run in the evenings, I do a lot of things in business, and I have way more, you could say, on my schedule than I did when I was in my 20s. And I'm able to do it a lot more of a flow-based, ease-based way by looking after all areas of my life. And I believe it all contributes over to the development of the iron will. And one of the greatest benefits from this is you begin to recognize that you always had the answers within. You begin to trust yourself, you listen to yourself more, and you believe in yourself more. Now, we can apply this, what's being discussed here, on skills that we want to acquire, behaviors that we want to express, ideal behaviors, like 
certain things that we spoke of, like a good meditation practice. It's important to find this within ourselves. So that's actually a good exercise for us to do, is to pause and say, where can I apply what is being suggested here in this book, in my life? How can I apply this? And how could I also apply more so from a place of flow, knowing that by doing it, you'll be able to allow yourself to be how you really want to be and experience these inherent abilities that were there within you. And you'll also find yourself releasing from certain thinking patterns, belief systems, and interpretations about yourself in relation to not having the iron will and actually bringing forth the iron will as a result of practice. So I trust you found this video to be helpful and it further contributed to your journey for revealing within yourself your own version of this, the divine will. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto-suggestion. You could say, I recognize that I have within me divine will ready to express through ideal behaviors, skills, and different aspects on the journey to realizing my vision. I find myself encouraging these attributes more so from a place of flow as I make it a priority, allowing it to express, releasing ideas and thinking patterns that are not true to me and aligning with the thinking patterns that are true in harmony with my vision, thus revealing my inherent iron will, my ability to commit in imagination to what I desire, how I see myself performing, and perform with consistency exactly how I imagine. I recognize more so every day that this becomes an automatic way of being. This elevates by self-confidence, which elevates my belief in myself, further discovering inherent abilities that are within me as I allow them to express to higher degrees of success in all areas of my life. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.